That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Svartkrava, also known as Black Crab, which will be available to stream on Netflix March 18th, 2022. It is the directorial debut of Adam Berg, uh, and it premiered at the Gothenburg Film Festival uh, earlier this year in February. Uh, notably, it is the return of Swedish superstar Numi Rapace to uh, Swedish language film production, because she hasn't done that in a while. Um, and it was also based on a novel by Jürker Verdborg. The basic story, uh, there appears to be like a world war or something. Sweden's in bad shape and we're focused on this one base where they are trying to get a collection of ice skaters together to transport two containers. And Numi Rapace is, um recruited because she is like a talented ice skater along with three other people there's six people all six together. total so they are asked to uh transport these containers across a body of water that hasn't been frozen over in like 37 years mm -hmm. so there's also like some climate change stuff going on and the name of the film black crab refers to the approach they're taking to transport these containers is they're going to travel across the ice behind enemy lines going sideways. So like a crab. Okay. The opening of the film is Numi Rapace, who's the star. I didn't mention that. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in a car with her daughter who appears to be like 10 or 11. And they're stuck in like a traffic jam when all of a sudden these militia type people just bust out and start shooting and killing people at random and someone takes Numi's daughter. Okay, so then we flash forward to more desperate times. Numi's recruited. She's a soldier now. She's a soldier now. They tell her this is the mission and she's like, that's a suicide mission, I'm not doing it. And the person in charge... Who's played by David Denchik, who's a very notable Danish actor. See, you've seen him and stuff. Is he the handsome one? No. Oh. <laughs> Oh. That's David Denchik. Uh, the, the handsome one you're talking about is Jacob, or probably pronounced Jakob Oftebro, who have seen in quite a few things, including uh, Kantiki, In Order of Disappearance. He's been around a while, too. So Numi says, why would I do this? It's a suicide mission. And they go, oh, maybe you'll reconsider because, you know what, your missing daughter? She's at the refugee camp over there. And they show her a picture. And it's so obvious, like, that is not true. But, of course, Numi thinks, like, okay, I'll do it. So they go. And Not the, without my daughter, yeah. Yeah. So the film is nearly two hours, and the bulk of it is this group of people, you know, going from point A to point B. They are successful, but in the process, four of them die, and it's just Numi and the handsome guy remaining. Mm -hmm. But at a point, one of the other soldiers, the young guy, he decides to open one of the cartridges and we find out that they're transporting biological warfare. And they discuss it and realize like this, what, what they're transporting is going to cause an extinction level event. So this is not, like they're not going to be fighting the war, they're going to be ending it because everyone's going to die. For everybody, yeah. So the handsome guy, he's the last one standing with Numi and he tells her like, we have to destroy this, we cannot let this happen. But Numi's so focused on seeing her daughter that she's like, no, I'm taking this so I can get in there and see my daughter. So she's successful. She makes it. Mm -hmm. In the process, she shoots the handsome guy, but he doesn't die because <laughs> when Numi wakes up, because she passes out before she gets to the base, and when she wakes up, she's at the base, mm -hmm. and they tell her, like, oh, you successfully made it, but you're in pretty bad shape. Like, her hands are all messed up. They had to amputate toes. But she's alive. They get her dressed up in her uniform and take her to the um, to the admiral in charge. I need to fix this lighting, but we're going to keep going. Um, they take her to the admiral in charge, mm -hmm. and the admiral, you know, gives her like a medal, of badge of honor, blah blah blah. And Numi's like, "That's all good and great, but I need to see my daughter." And the admiral says, "Oh." She's not really here. We just told you that because we knew it would motivate she you. She goes, it was that hope that got you here for this mission. Cut to Numi whoops that as admiral's ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after she's done whooping her ass, she goes back to her little area and has like, I guess, she decides, oh, I guess we should destroy. 
the biological warfare. So she finds the handsome guy. Because she knows if that gets out, then her daughter definitely will be dead. Her and the handsome guy go find it. They're able to escape the base, but it's kind of like everyone's evacuating. All guns are on her and she has to make a decision. An executive decision. And she decides to, um, like, uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, grenade. Yeah, pull a grenade and basically blow herself up with the chemicals. The end. There this, you go. This is rough. This lighting is betraying me. Okay, what did you think? Of Svart Kraba, which mm -hmm. I maintain should be your new nickname. Um, Mine? Uh, I'm a black crab. <laughs> well, I'm crabby. Yeah, that's... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think I like the idea of it more and it has some really kind of creepy elements sometimes because they, they stumble over this, a sea of bodies frozen in ice, which I thought was pretty cool. And the best, mo the most tense moments are, is really the journey on the ice, uh, and, and, you know, having to go through certain parts that aren't, that's not really frozen over, uh, cause right away when they start out, the leader of the group, this woman <laughs> goes under and dies and Numi has to dive in. Numi's name is Carolyn in the movie, by the way. And she has to go in and cut out those canisters out of her backpack. Initially, with the environmental sci-fi things, I, I was uh, kind of curious. I was hoping it would go into more like Anna Kavan's uh, sci-fi dystopic ice direction. Um, but it doesn't. Uh, I think the final, the, the third act, the denouement, really kind of loses a lot of energy and, and becomes a, kind of a bit silly, yeah. uh, if you will. Uh, Numi's hair is also very distracting in this film. I'm sure you have notes on that. I mean, her hair looks like when you get the little black Cabbage Patch doll with the curly hair. <laughs> That's what, it looks terrible. Um, but I agree. I think the movie feels long. I think the actual journey and the obstacles these soldier's face that part was the most interesting and i was actually quite engaged for that like the middle two-thirds but you know i had this problem with um the adam project we just watched something else where like the main character's motivation is so selfish that it just really annoys me like this lady i but i it it's, you know, we can tap into the universal appeal. We can understand why she would do that. But it, yes. it also plays like cliche. It does. I wish that this would have just been... Like, we just start out from the jump. Like, six soldiers have to get across this ice. And during this journey, we... Like, these characters are developed and we understand why they're proceeding. But it just felt so basic that it just starts with her daughter being kidnapped. And then they show her a picture like, Oh, by the way, your daughter's at the camp. Why didn't y'all tell me this before? Like, it's just so stupid. It's, it's clear she's being manipulated, but then um, it, it, it felt kind of like what I've seen like films about Russians doing to each other, it motivating her, and then I assume they would try to kill her after she beat up that admiral, but uh, or the commander, the commander-in-chief yeah. there. Uh, it, it's just, it's very linear, very straightforward. I kind of wanted it to be a little more maybe like 12 monkeys in the biochemical warfare uh, component of it uh you had brought up against the ice which we had just just reviewed as kind of another i feel like if the director of against the ice and the director of black crab got together they could make a really good movie because i felt like that film against the ice took a pretty big topic and stripped it down to something that i thought felt very concise and palatable and i think the performances i like them better than you did the great visuals but very little action and sure. then I think in this film, the director really does a good job of creating a lot of tension while these people are traveling over the ice. So those two need to get together and make a movie. <laughs> sure. I do. I, I appreciate Numi Rapace's choices in film projects because she takes a lot of risks. Uh, she works, you know, we were, we were kind of joking as we watched this, like, is she, is she ever written a, like a romantic comedy? <laughs> She's, she has an interesting she, look. She always plays really weird, bizarre characters, which I really appreciate. Um, one of the most interesting things I've seen so far this year is You Are Not Alone, uh, which played at Sundance and is coming out in the next two weeks or so, uh, which I really liked. And she that's an ensemble cast that she's part of. But I don't have much to say. I mean, the, the I, like I just wish that we could have focused more on the journey because we don't get a sense of like when these people sleep how long it takes that, them yes. to actually like how long it takes them to actually make the trip i constantly had questions about wh yeah where are they sleeping because they have to travel by night you know where are they sleeping during the day 
because they, they kind of have to go off on land and build fires and and they're constantly being detected by you know uh, enemy forces all around so it, you know yeah there was some logistics that i was very curious about also but, numi's character is like a professional ice skater it would seem a speed skater turns or speed skater turns soldier and she is very competent with firearms and battle and i thought that was weird because they trained her yeah but like she's like She's very good. She's very, like, okay. Yeah, th there are some distracting elements for sure. Like this lighting. Uh, what would you give, or did you finish your notes? Sure. What would you give it? Uh, two and a half. I would give it two and a half as well. Thank you. Thank you.